Hi guys and welcome to this video here today on the introduction to algebra, a brand new section of the course here for year seven. And if you are tuning in, it is really good to see you. Have you subscribed yet? No? There's a little doohickey over there for you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you are watching on mathsguru.com, welcome. It is really, really good to see you. Now, actually, this video and all others are much better search for on mathsguru.com. Hopefully, go over there, log in, sign up. It's all free, and we look forward to seeing you there. Now, introduction to algebra. Algebra is so, so important. Believe it or not, it is the foundation for so much maths coming up in later years, outside of year seven. Problem is, as you can probably see behind me in blue, it says maths is a big fat trick, and it absolutely is. The shame of algebra is that so many people out there find it hard because the language really confuses them. Now, I'm speaking to you in English. You know that all of these words make sense to you because you've learned those individual words. You understand the context. You know that when I say hello, it's a greeting. Hello. If we do the same with algebra, I promise you, you will gun this stuff. If you learn the words and the peculiarities, I promise you maths isn't that hard. Maths teachers, sadly, try and make it sound hard. I don't know why. It really frustrates me. But it actually isn't, and we're going to demystify this here and now if you stick with this video. Right, so I always start with the learning for the lesson, that's being shown above. But I need you to know what a pronumeral, a variable, a term, a constant expression, do you know? See, already your mind is going, because you've probably never met this stuff before. Don't worry about it. By the end of the video, you'll have got these words understood and be able to apply them to questions. So, you know, again, I always start each new video with a bit of a recap of past learning, but we haven't met this stuff before. It might be brand new to you. Some of it you might have done, some of it you won't have done. That's fine. Keep watching till the end of this video. You will be a gun. But again, I come back over and over and over again. Maths is a huge big fat trick. There is no two ways about it. I'm going to demystify that for you. So let's start simple. Let's start with the first two things we need to know about, and that is an equation and an expression. Right, let's write down. I'm going to do that by example because you're going to look at it and you go, oh, hold on, I know the difference. Right, what is an equation? Well, let's uh, write down something that's an equation. Uh, 3x uh, plus 4 equals 6. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an equation. I'm now going to write down an expression. Uh, 3a plus 3b minus 4c plus 6 and I stopped talking there. Do you see the difference between an equation and an expression? All right, this first one here is an equation, so I'm just gonna write EQ with a little floaty N, math shorthand, and this one here is an expression. And what do you see is the difference? Yes, I've used different letters, I've got A's, B's, and C's in one of them, and I've got an X and uh, numbers in the other, but actually the important thing to notice is the difference between an equation and an expression is that equal sign. Okay, so when you see an equals, then you have an equation. Without that equals, you have an expression. Now, in all of those things, you can evaluate stuff. Oh, evaluate, evaluate, new word, new word. <laughs> evaluate. See what I'm doing here? Evaluate. All right, when you're trying to evaluate, you are finding the value of something. The answer will end in a numerical value. Yes! Whether it's an expression or whether an equation, Generally speaking, we deal with stuff in exactly the same way, but I don't want to rush things because let's throw some confusing language in. That was the whole point of this, wasn't it? We started with that, you know, learning for today, all that stuff, and, but we know how to read, so that's the good news. Right, let's have a look. I've got some bread text here at the bottom of the screen, and yes, it's explained, but let's do some examples because all of these notes, everything I write at the moment will be attached to the video for you to download and use in summary books or for your own notes. So let's see, let's come up with uh, 3a plus 4b minus 6c plus 7. So is that an equation or an expression? It is an expression, congratulations. And let's see, right, number one, first confusing word, term. I'm going to tell you that this here is a term. That 3a is a term. A number and a letter or a number and a group of letters that are all stuck together with kissy kisses, we'll come back to that in a moment, is a term. When we have a plus and a minus, it then stops being a term and we move to the next term. So what do I mean by that? Well, this plus 4b is also a term. 
Notice I said the word plus 4b. Very important. That plus belongs to the 4b. Do you see where my next term is? Oh yeah, minus 6c. Uh -huh. Notice again, minus 6c. Very important. And here is my next term, plus 7. So how many things have I highlighted? Wow, this feels like an episode of Sesame Street. A count, a one, a two, a three, a four. How many terms have I highlighted? I've highlighted four, and so there are, in fact, four terms there. That's terms done. What is a pronumeral? Well, it says there, a letter with an exclamation mark. Well, it is, in fact, a letter. This here, this A, is a pronumeral. This B is a pronumeral. This C is a pronumeral. Now, terms don't have to have just one letter. We can have something like 6xy, for example. That is still a term. Remember, it is a letter and, uh, sorry, it is a number and some letters stuck together by kitty kisses. Yeah, still coming back to that. But this x here is still a pronumeral and that y is still a pronumeral. We have two pronumerals there. All right, what about a constant? I love constants because they are things without a letter. Can you see which one in there is the constant? Is it the 3a? Uh, nope, it's got a letter in it. Is it the 4b? Nope, it's got a letter in it. Is it the minus 6c? Nope, it's got a letter in it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we are very happy that the 7, or more importantly, the plus 7, is in fact my constant. Yep, good tick. We're happy with the constant now. Coefficient sounds very, very long word. Sounds confusing. The type of word that a maths teacher would make up to make stuff sound hard. Well, yep. What does it say, though, in the question? A coefficient is the number in front of a term. Well, we already know that we've got one, two, three, four terms. And a count, and I like the count. Let's look at this one here. What is the coefficient? Yep, hopefully you're all screaming at the screen. It's the three. What about the coefficient here? Did you say four? Eh, eh. I'm going to split hairs, and I haven't got a lot of that to go around. Why? Because the coefficient is actually plus four. It's really, really important to remember that plus. What about the coefficient here? Well, that now would make that minus six or negative six. And what about the coefficient here? Well, a coefficient is a number in front of a pronumeral or in front of a term. We'll come back to whether that's a coefficient or a constant. I, I think it's a constant. I don't fully understand why, how that would be a coefficient. And lastly, variable. Well, that's got nothing to do with this at this moment in time, but it's in a very important word. It's important to know that in maths, a letter basically stands for a number. Now, that's rushing ahead a little bit. We'll come back to that in a moment. But a letter can take different values. And when it can take different values, that makes it a variable. And it's that thing. Variable means different values can change. So there we go. Those are those five really important things we started at the start of the lesson. We're going to use that stuff throughout now. So it's important that we look at, oh, let's compare. Let's do some examples because I think that's important, isn't it? Yep. So all of my examples are taken from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series. And I am so, so grateful to Cambridge. Um, fabulous, fabulous people. Now, example one says list the individual terms in the expression 3a plus b plus 13c. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen so many kids go, oh, I, I can do this. That must be 3a plus b plus 13c. And at which point I go, mm, uh, no. When you go shopping or when you go out and you make a list, do you write it long ways or across the screen? I don't think so. When I write a list, I write it going down. And that's exactly what the question is asking you to do. So my first term would be 3a. My next term would be b. Now, I don't have to write the plus b. Going back to this plus stuff, it's important to know that the b has the plus. But if I had to say plus every time for my counting numbers, I don't think I'd ever finish. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6. No, that's just nuts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative numbers, we must obviously put them in. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Yep, that's important. So 3a is one term. b is my next term. And 13c is my next term. If I wrote them like that in a list, going down the page, tick, job done, easy. State the coefficient of each pronumeral in the expression. Mm -mm, coefficient, coefficient, what's the coefficient? It's the number in front, if you remember. So the number in front of that is 3. Ooh, hold on a moment. Bit of a tricky one here. So let's look at this. We know that the coefficient in front of the 3a is 3. Let's do that. So we've got a 3. But then we've got this b on it saying... 
What's the coefficient of b? There's no number in front of it, so it must be a zero, yes? No. You've been tricked. If I write zero in front of a number, we all know that zero times anything is in fact zero. No use to me. What is the one number we don't write in front? I'll do that again. What is the one, 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 one number we don't write in front of things because we just know? How many b's do you see? You see one b. And so, yes, in fact, in front of that b is a one. Huge trick. So I'm now going to write down that the next coefficient would be one. And finally, the last one's simple, 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 plus 13c. So I would have 13 as my coefficient. I'll give an example of an expression. See what the question's doing. In maths, what we do forwards, we can also do backwards. So in this situation, we're saying, well, no, we're not going to give you the question. You come up with a question that has to have exactly two terms. All right, so that's important to know. Exactly. It has to have exactly two terms, one of which is a constant. Right, so we've got term and a term, and one of them must be a constant. I can come up with any number I like, so I'm going to write plus three, because I like the number three. There we go, there's my constant done. And now I want another term. Uh, let's think, oh, I don't know, seven, and let's choose the value p. It doesn't matter which one it is. Now imagine there are infinite number of answers here, but seven p plus three is an expression, because it doesn't have an equals and one of which is a constant term. Now, marrying, I'm not getting married, no, well, maybe one day, but marrying maths and English together, it is really important that we understand the language that is being used. And there is so many words here that we use in mathematics to sadly try and trick you. More than, less than, sum, double, product, halved, divided by, subtracted, tripled, lots of. This whole section is about using that language to build algebraic expressions. And the order of the language is seriously, seriously important. So I'm going to do some examples just to give you an indication. And sadly, these are the type of questions that probably cause people the most heartache and the most difficulty. Right. Write an expression for each of the following. So an expression. Okay, we know that. We got the word expression. Thank you. We're going to highlight because that's important for each of the following. Five more than K. Now, the order here is really important. What does more than mean in maths? Plus. But if I have 10 more than 20, that tells me I'm going to do 20 plus 10. It's more than 20. That number is actually the start number. So if I have 5 more than k, it's actually telling me write the k value first, then the more than, and then the 5. Drop the mic. 3 less than m. Hold on a moment. Again, 3 less than m. What is the start number? Is it the 3 or is it the m? Well, if it's less than m, we've got to start with the m. And then less than means 3, and we subtract the 3. This is all just practice. The sum of a and b. Oh, sum means add. So I'm going to add a and b together. The sum of a and b. Double the value of x. Oh, again, I've got the value of x, and then I'm going to double it. Well, if I double it, I'm multiplying it by 2. So I could write x times 2. But what we've noticed in algebra is that when we've got this kissy kissy, this times in between it, we seemingly can stick the letters together, or the number and the letter together. So that is exactly the same as x2. But if we go back to my previous examples earlier in this lesson, do you notice where I always put the numbers? If you look at all of the examples here, all of those terms, the number always goes first. So scrolling back to this, we probably wouldn't write x2. We would say that is the same as 2x. So there we go. Double the value of x is 2x. The next one, product. What does product mean? Well, it's something we go and buy at a shop, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, no. Product of C and D is when you multiply those together. When you product of C and D, so that is C times D, or C kissy kissy D, and we know again that when things are times together, we bring them close. We share the love. Now, there we go. That was basic examples. The most important part of each of these examples was, in fact, knowing that the M was at the start, knowing that the K 
was at the start, knowing the structure of the English language. Right, I'm heading towards the end of this video. Let's go to example three provided by the Cambridge Essentials textbook season. Write an expression for each of the following without using a times or a divide symbol. Oh, that sounds challenging. P is halved, then four is added. Now the trick word here is then. You're gonna do something and then something else. Right, P is halved. What does that mean? P is halved, I'm halving P, I'm dividing it by two. Now I could write P divided by two, but the question quite clearly states, ah, 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 no divide sign. So I can know that I can write that as P on two, because that line between is a divide sign. Then, okay, then, so I'm gonna do something after the P divided by two, four is added, so I'm gonna add on four. So the English is giving me the order. Love that question. What about the next one? The sum of X and Y is taken. The sum of X, the sum of X and Y is taken and then, okay, next thing, divided by seven, right. And now this is where it starts to get, sum of X and Y, we know how to do that. We know the sum means X plus Y. And it says, and then divided by seven. Right, there we go. We can do that, can't we? Because mm -mm -mm -mm, the question says we can't do the divide sign. Now, with this particular question, how many different terms do we have? Do we have one? No. Do we have two? We do indeed. Now, because the order says sum x and y first, and then divide by seven, what it's really trying to say is divide everything by seven. So we now know that we can do this line underneath and the seven, and that gives me the correct answer. X and Y first, if I have more than one term, then multiply it all together or divide, and we're gonna start using brackets in a minute. The sum of set, uh, X and one seventh of Y. The sum of X and one seventh of Y, sum. So we know we've got an X, we've got a plus, sorry. Sum of x, well, there we go, we're gonna, sum of x and one seventh of y. Well, one seventh is the same as y divided by seven. So one seventh of y is the same as y divided by seven, but we can't write that, so we have to y, write y on seven. Now, why am I not dividing all of that by seven? Because the question quite clearly said, we are gonna do the sum of x and it's only the y that is divided by seven. Again, all of these questions take some sort of practice. And five is subtracted from k, and the result, now what that means is what we've got left, or what we have, is then tripled. Okay, so let's do it in order. Five is subtracted from k. Now from k tells me the k has to be the start. So I've got a k, and I'm gonna subtract five and the result is tripled. Now, what a lot of people do is they go, well, okay, that means times by three, and sadly, that's not right. We've got more than one term that we're doing something to, and we have to group those terms. We have to say to the question, let's remember we've done this first. Now, go back to bid maths or bod maths. Brackets tell us do this first. So by putting in a set of brackets here, it says, take away k, uh, sorry, do, phi, uh, do k, take away five, and then the result, bracket, is triple. Now, I could do literally thousands of questions for this, but unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it's down to you to do a little bit of trial and error, have a go, get some questions wrong, look at the language, but this lesson is over. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching. It has been good. This is an introduction to algebra, which we are going to use in later videos. If you haven't already done so, please head on over to mathsguru.com if you're not already on the site and sign up. It's free, particularly to those students who teach me. And you can watch this video there. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Take care. Have a good day.